This is Utila, Honduras. We spent 10 days here snorkeling and scuba diving, and we want to learn more about the coral that we saw. This is Brian Becker, the scientist for Whale Shark Oceanic Research Center, and he will be answering all the questions that we will ask today. The first thing we asked Becker is, what is coral? Corals, uh, even though they look like rocks, it's sort of like, let's see, how could we put this? Imagine if a skyscraper was a living part of all of the humans that lived inside the skyscraper. So every apartment is full of a person, but a person builds the walls of the apartment and they all get together into one big skyscraper. As more and more people live, is what this would look like, they make the skyscraper bigger and bigger. So the coral, when you think of the part that looks like a rock, that actually is rock, but it's built by living animals that live inside of that. It gets its color because inside every chamber, along with the, uh, the coral organism, there's also an algae. The algae is not part of the coral, but the coral needs the algae to stay alive. And that's where it gets its color, and that helps the coral turn the seawater into the calcium carbonate that it makes its building out of. How many different species of coral are there in the world? Ooh, I don't know the answer to that one. There's a lot. Okay, I mean, there's I lots and lots. Okay. And this is a fairly unscientific way to look at it. You've got hydrocorals, gorgonians, which are soft corals, mm -hmm. stony corals, black corals, which look very soft and feathery, but they're actually not the same thing as soft coral. Uh, there are some parts of the world where they can find coral that actually exists in 6,000 feet of water. 6,000 feet is how many meters? 2, About 2,000 meters, exactly. So 2,000 meters, so there's definitely has nothing to do with sunlight. These are cold water corals that are not using sunlight. Um, let's see, the coral themselves don't put us in the But inside the coral there is algae, like I mentioned before, that gets its energy from sunlight. Not all corals have that relationship with algae, and the ones that live at 6,000 feet or 2,000 meters don't have that kind of relationship. But they can still take calcium carbonate out of the seawater and build their structures. What is the coral's lifespan, roughly? Well, that's an interesting question. Do you mean the individual organism, or do you mean the colony as a whole? The individual organism. I don't know. Uh -uh. No, one individual coral in one little apartment building? I'm not entirely sure. Individual ones. They probably don't live that long. Yep. You get another layer on the outside, another layer on the outside, and individual members of the colony die. Yep. Now that we knew what coral was, we decided to learn what we could do to protect it. But they started off just stepping on one little coral, and then they went, and then the bacteria from their feet that they didn't wear flippers that it start to kind of decompose everything. Okay. How come? Well, it depends on what the human had on them. Studies so suggest yeah. that the urine in your wetsuit can harm coral, but uh, the same studies suggest urine, that the amount of wetsuits, urine that you would need in your wetsuit to actually harm coral is a lot more than you would be wetsuit. able to pee out. Uh, if you were so, sick, you could no worries. The best thing you can do is stay away from it. Anytime you go diving or snorkeling, you have an impact on it. You've got more impact if you go in the water than if you don't. The same thing is if you love the woods and you love camping. Well, those things are a little bit um, contrary to each other. If you really love the woods, stay out of the woods and stay in the city and don't go anywhere at all. Um, obviously, that's not a very practical solution to the way that uh, we want to live because we want to spend time looking at beautiful things. So then you have to do everything you can to minimize it. And like Rob was saying, um, consuming the fish that live on the reef, that's a huge way to create imbalance on the reef. The groupers, the snappers, they eat the damselfish and the pufferfish. If you eat the groupers and the snappers, then nobody can eat the damselfish, and then everything gets off kilter. Uh, that doesn't mean go around eating the pufferfish either. 
because they have a role to play as well. Now that we know all about this underwater fancy land, we can go see it for ourselves. Hold on to the back of the tank. Oh, 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 oh,